Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial about doing vertex animation textures in you in Houdini for Unity. So what I'm gonna do is the things you see on screen here. First I'm just gonna make this sphere really simple to show the basics and how to install the things that we need to make everything work. And then I'm Probably in the next tutorial, I'm going to make this uh, text like balloon thing going on. And then I'm going to make this uh, jump castle and make, yeah, and fun asset like this. So this is what we're going to do. <clears throat> and there will be some options to maybe you want to control this by script how you want to have it and so forth. Yeah, it's going to be fun. So first off, we're going to start in an empty scene and we want to start in Houdini. So in Houdini, we're going to start with a geometry node. In here, we're going to have a sphere and we're going to just lift it up a little bit like this. So it's going to be above the ground. And in Houdini, we have a really nice node uh, Vellum cloth. So this one, just by adding it like this, creates a mesh, well, a, a cloth out of your mesh. And then we just only need to uh, add this vellum solver. And this one is calculating the uh, collisions and stuff. So if we and also in the solver here we just uh, go ground position so now we have the collision to the ground <clears throat> and if you press play it do work now the sphere is uh, uh, very uniform so it will kind of not happen it it's pretty stable it won't happen so much so if we just do um remesh after this sphere here and make more resolution then it will happen more in our simulation nice so let's say we're really happy about this one and we want to export it into unity so the first thing we want to save this unity file here we're going to save as and we're actually going to save it inside this folder. So show in Explorer and do copy the path here. And we add it up here. And then we just do that basics. Basics. That will be fine for now. So now we have that file saved in here. I like to have it organized like this. And the thing, you need to have this side effects labs installed. So if you don't have, then save the file now. And then you do this. Um, and even if you don't see this at all, you can go to this plus sign here, shelves, side effects labs down there. And maybe you just see update toolset. So you click the update toolset and follow that instruction and restart Houdini. And then you have this stuff. And we want this vertex animation thing here. There is two ways to do this. And I'm going to show you how I tend to do it. So you see this is... Um, here we are inside the object folder and inside the geometry node here and here you also have output <clears throat> and output is where you render stuff out so we could have a vertex animation texture here but if I want to go back then I have to go here in here and then I get back and I find it a little bit um, far away in a way it's not of course but i rather have it like this so i do a rop network here and inside here i do the labs vertex animation stuff so then i just need to go in here 
and go uh, go out instead of going here to this kind of stuff so i just want to show you two ways of do it you can do however you want i want to have it like this and also also <clears throat> we're going to have a null node so it's going to be out out spear so it's easier to find so inside this rock net thing we have this one and first thing we want to do is input geometry we want to fetch this out sphere and accept so uh, there is an error and that's because we have rigid body dynamics it's not what we have we have soft body deformation so we change and that then it will work because now it gets a expected geometry and also I find uh, simulation to be good enough at 50 frames so here I do control shift click so I can put in a manually value and here you see unreal we want to have unity in the settings I'm gonna leave these things as they are and if you have a really really big thing going on with a lot of vertex stuff points a lot of points you know here then you need to up upscale the texture but um, yeah we don't need that this is sufficient for a lot and input we don't need to wor worry about this export so export we want it to end up in this folder here so show in explorer i go inside to that correct folder and I copy the path and paste it here and the asset name is going to be a spear and I also want all the files to end up in the folder directly I don't want it to be subfolders with textures mesh and materials so I just untick this one but maybe it likes uh, a lot of folders you can just keep it and here uh, we can pick what kind of textures we want to render out we want to render the geometry and the position texture the rotation texture that's for the normals and we don't need any colors because we don't have any colors that we want to save so we just do the position and rotation so that's nice advanced we don't touch not target engine and real time shader this is unity and this is super nice because now if we click this unity pa package and guides it is exactly what it says here you get the folder and you have package installation how you're going to install it in unity and instead of you read it i'm going to show you so copy this path here and this path you only get if you have installed this shelf up here so i copy the path and inside unity i go to windows package manager and then in the plus icon up here add package from disk and here i paste the path and package open and then you will get an install button here or somewhere else i don't know where it is probably here but i already installed it so uh, i don't need to do it but you install and when we have installed it you will have this folder here um, popping up and in editor and presets and shaders you got stuff so in presets we're going to use that for the mesh and text text textures and shaders that's what we want to that's what we need to make everything work so now we have everything we need we just do render all and it do its stuff we go back and the files are here first thing is the mesh we want to add well do the settings here how we want it and if we check here package installation we did then we have import settings so we have um, for the mesh and for the textures and if um, if you don't get the presets to work you know where to find the settings 
but you are supposed to get it to work by clicking on this slider button and then you have this preset so now everything is set as it's supposed to be a apply and now that's finished and done maybe you don't find these presets maybe you install it to a beta version unit or something then it might not show up but um, you know how to fix it so the textures you're gonna also have other stuff not mip maps and so on so we just do the slider button and do, do the HDR that's gonna be super good for us apply so it should work um, now so here is the sphere and we want to on the mesh we want to place the material and on the material we want to place the position texture to the position texture here and the rotation we want to the rotation and that's to have the correct normals and now it works super woohoo <clears throat> <clears throat> maybe it didn't work for you because you made another mesh and I'm not fully sure about how it works under the hood but I'm gonna replicate or well make a bug or error what it is so if I would like do this bigger and move it even longer up and I do this simulation looks really good so far everything works I'm actually gonna do the remesh um, a little bit bigger yeah so, so let's say we are happy with this one here and we wanna export it because we have everything set up we just do render all and this is super nice because when we point directly into the Unity folder, all these stuff updates and the settings are kept, so we don't need to redo them. So in the material, we just add, we do, we do need to add the position again and the rotation. And now you see there is stuff going on. It's not doing as expected. So what? the reason is and I'm not totally sure how uh, well yes how and if you know please comment in the comments down below to explain or I figure it out later and explain it in another tutorial but there is something about the pivot so when the pivot is not somewhere then the, um, if you move the mesh too much around or it's not uh, done in a certain way then we have this problem so I found a workaround for this that works for me hopefully it works for you too and if we just do a transform directly after vellum solver solver we do it um, 10 times smaller then everything happens really close to the center and if we just in the ROP network render all again and then we just uh, let's see the material we just add it again the position and the rotation and that now you see it works it's super tiny but it do work so then for me it works to just do this 10 times bigger and of course if you need it in another way you could just I guess have it a parent on it and this one will be scale one so yeah I don't know if this works for you it works for me so here we have it so this is like the super super basics how it works and the material here you have auto playback and probably you want to control this from a script so you can choose where you want to display this um, animation you also have the playback speed if you want to have it faster or slower of course and you have this Houdini frames per second 
So this one should be populated automatically because in Houdini, you do here down in the left corner, you have frames per second here and it should be the same here. Also, maybe you think it's a little bit jaggy movement. Then you could just do the interpolate. So it's actually going to be more smooth between the frames because now it's 60 frames per second, but the animation is just 24. And also you have down here, you got extra more stuff and you have this. This is the bounding box and so forth, but you'd never need to touch this because this is done by Houdini. And also another important thing is that this shader here, that's the shader that, that the ball uses at the moment. But it's just the super basic default stuff. You are supposed to tweak this one. So what you want to do, if you copy this node here and you paste it somewhere else. Then you want to make sure. So I do edit on it as a suffix. So then you want to make sure that this material here is actually inside FX Labs. You have this edit that we just made with small letters. So now it's actually using this shader. And do this because if um, because now there is a backup of the other one here. So you can just tweak and do whatever you want with this one. And if I go into this one, for instance, it's well, it's happening some stuff here and it works. So we don't need to think about it. So that's good. The only thing I want to add is a float smoothness. And I want it to be a slider 0 to 1 and a default to 0 0.5. And I want it to be in smoothness, of course. So my shortcut did stop working, so I need to do it like this. <clears throat> and so now we have the material and we have the smoothness. Super easy, of course, but that's how I set it up. So I'm going to break the tutorial here and in the next one, I'm going to continue with a, a text that works more well, the text mesh and also do the jumping castle later on. I really hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions, you can just type in the, in the comments below. Thank you so much and see you in the next tutorial.